Hello, my fellow chatterers and book hoarders and anyone else who's popped into my channel because you're curious or you're lost. <laughs> my name is Chatty and this is my channel, Chatty the Mad Chatter. And today I'm going to be chatting away madly about readathons. So this is part one of I Can't Resist a Readathon. So the first readathon I'm going to be talking about is the Asian readathon. Um, so I didn't plan to do any readathons uh, in May, but then suddenly I got excited about these three when I saw they were coming up and I can't say no. Uh, <laughs> so I knew Asian readathon happened sometime around the spring or the summertime and I wasn't sure when and then Kushi Kushore's video popped up on my feed um, talking about her, um, um, talking about people getting excited about the Asian readathon. So I was like, haha, it's May. Okay, let's do this. Um, so this is a readathon that has been created by Cindy from the channel with Cindy and she has a fantastic video explaining all you need to know about the Asian readathon and this is the fourth year that she has been doing this um, and the theme this year is everything everywhere all at once um, from the movie everything everywhere all at once um, which I haven't watched and don't know anything about so please do go and check out Cindy's video find out all you need to know about the readathon and how that theme kind of works into all the prompts. Um, also check out Cushy's video as well. Um, I find them both very funny booktubers and insightful on their books. So this is another one shot, no editing, where I'm going to take you through what I am possibly considering reading um, for the Asian readathon. Okay, so it's a month long readathon, but I've already done my TBR that I have committed to, and there is a reward or punishment riding on it. And none of those books are written by Asian authors, so I cannot use them for this. And the whole point of this readathon is obviously to promote Asian authors um, and to see how fantastic their books are and to encourage all the wonderful work they do to be shared um, across readers and book lovers. Um, so I have gathered a selection of books that I could read. I'm not going to commit any books to a prompt um, at the moment because I kind of want to explore what my options are going to be for the other readathons I want to take part in and see if I can mix them up. So one of the big things that Cindy talks about with this readathon is you can, there's five different prompts, and you can read a book that um, encounters you know or encounters i don't know what the word is includes there we go it's an in word um includes all of the prompts or like three prompts or two prompts um but each book you read has to have an asian author from a different country so for example you can't read two authors from japan and um, you can't read two authors from Afghanistan, you could read, you know, prompts one to three with an author from Syria or and prompts four to five with an author from Vietnam. So <laughs> what I'm going to do first is I am going to go through all my books that I have. Um, I've only read two of them. So those are going to be my ones that I'm recommending to you. Should you want to partake in this readathon or just should you be generally interested in these books and want to read something? Um, but the rest, I've not read any of them. Um, and I went to the library today because I was looking for one particular book and I didn't find it, but I did come out with four other books um, and three of which are by Asian authors. So the first one I want to plug to you um, you will know this author from a different book. Um, it was really popular on booktube last year. So Zen Cho wrote Black Water Sister, which I haven't read, but I'm so excited about. This is another Zen Cho book. This is her debut novel. It is a fantasy. Um, it's a historical fantasy um, called Sorcerer to the Crown. Now, this book includes um, two um, magicians. Um, well, I suppose magician and witch. Anyway, magical people. <laughs> um, where was I going with this? Yes, it includes two magical people in Regency London. Um, and it's, it has vibes of 
Jane Austen and the witticism and the language are all things that I absolutely love. And um, one of the protagonists, Prunella, um, is incredible. Um, and she is um, of Asian heritage and um, obviously has to navigate a huge amount of prejudice um, within Regency society um, because of her culture. And I absolutely love this book. You won't have seen my March wrap up because I was never able to post it due to technical problems. Um, but if you did, you would have heard me say this was one of the favourite books I read that month. I absolutely love, 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 loved it. So if you enjoy the works of Jane Austen or if you enjoy Georgette Heyer and like that writing style, that Regency London mannerisms and language, but you also want to include some fake characters in here, then this book you will love. I think the language has been one of the drawbacks for some people not being able to enjoy the book as much as they hoped. But I think if you are someone who reads Jane Austen, you're going to be fine with this. So that is that is my recommendation. Um, Zen Cho is a British Malaysian author. So if you're wanting to keep track of which books come from where, that's that one. So I'm not going to be reading this because I've already read it, but what I want to put in the pile of possibilities is book two in the series, which is The True Queen. I'm very excited about this book. I um, think I'm absolutely going to love it because I love the first one so much. I can't wait to be back with these characters and back in this world. So this is a definite possibility, um, but it's of a reasonable size. Um, so we have to see because I am very aware that I've got six other books that I need to read, three of which are quite chunky. And um, another book that I am doing, um, going to be reading over a weekend, but I'm not sure which one it is yet. So I'm just aware of what is physically going to be possible for me to cram in <laughs> at the moment. But this is, is a very high contender because I, I love her work. And I'm so pleased because I really felt like I was going to love Sencho. Let's just hope the second book lives up to the same hype. So the next book is the most recent book that I have acquired and that is Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagwa. I am probably pronouncing that horribly so I do apologise. Um, and this book um, came through with my shelter book, shelter box book club, <laughs> came in the post. Um, and this is obviously perfect. Um, I have sometimes felt intimidated by some of the books that I have got with the Shelter Book Club box. Um, as you know, The Wife's Tale, I didn't gel with that one. But from reading the back of this one, I'm really excited to read this. I think this is really going to work for me. It's a contemporary book and I think it really is going to deal with like characters and their emotions and the relationship. Um, that they have with life and each other. So I do feel it's gonna be um, a book that really, really works for me. I do enjoy the cover as well, the cherry blossoms and the three different characters that we look at in here. Um, as always with my books, um, I'm not going to give you a synopsis um, of what the book's about so much because I like to go into books that I haven't read before knowing as little as possible about them. So as always, I'm going to link the story graph um, links on, in the description so you can click and find out more about these books. I absolutely love story graph. It has trigger warnings in there. So if you are concerned about anything being triggering for you, you can check it out too. Um, and I can't remember if I already said um, about Cindy having a, like a directory of Asian readers on the story graph site. So it's got a whole list of loads of different books you could read. I don't think I have, so I will, I will get back to that before I talk about the prompts. Anyway, back to Sweet Bean Paste. Um, so it does sort of deal with um, these characters here. Um, we have this man who's sort of become a little bit disillusioned with what he's doing, and then his life is changed when he meets um, this woman here. Um, it does have um, physical disability represented in this book. 
so um, if that is something you are trying to hit for a different book prompt then that would work as well so yeah I'm really keen for this one and it's it's not big it's quite small it seems quite manageable with the text size so this is definitely a contender so the next book I have is a YA book it is a YA fantasy book and this is by a Taiwanese American author called Emily K. R. Pan and it is An Arrow to the Moon um, and again I don't know a huge amount about this because I've not read it um, but it is sort of a and in, in it's not exactly a retelling of Romeo and Juliet but it has that kind of inspiration behind it um there is magic but it's in a sort of modern contemporary setting um both characters are at school both characters I think are struggling in their own way and other than that I'm not entirely sure but it is a very beautiful fairy loot edition of this book and it's got foiling on the cover so it's very very pretty um and I'm keen to give it a go and see what it's going to be like but again it is of a reasonable size it's got quite a lot of writing in here so it's on the longer side so that may or may not work in its favour as to whether or not I will be picking it then I have another um fantasy book and that is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O and Axie O is a Korean American and this um, fantasy also has, I think, feelings of mythology. I could be wrong, it either has that kind of um, vibe in the story or it has um, elements of Korean mythology within the story as well. And it is so beautiful. The original cover is beautiful. It's got more of like yellows and greens and purples on it. And this is the Fairy Loot edition again. And it is utterly gorgeous. So I'm very excited to read this one. This one was on my radar, it was on my list of books that I, if I was very good, I hoped to purchase and have in my life. And then beautifully the Fairy Loot box then gave it to me, so that was highly delightful and exciting. Um, so this is definitely a contender because I'm very excited to read it. Um, reasonable size, I suppose it's, it's, got, it's quite large with the text, so we will, we will see how we go with that one. Um, and another book um, I have was, a, this one was a gift. So again, it's another recent edition. This was one of my Mother's Day gifts from my children that they chose. And this is The School for Good Mothers. I don't know if they're trying to tell me something. Um, and this is by Jasmine Chan. She is a Chinese American author. And this is a dystopia novel. So it is about a woman who is in the middle of putting her daughter to bed, has some other things she needs to do and then her daughter has been taken away from her because they deem her to be an unfit mother and she must then go to the school for good mothers is what I believe this book is about but again not 100% certain, <laughs> go and check it out <laughs> on Storygraph but I'm really intrigued, I really enjoyed the YA dystopia by Neil Schusterman I read the other month so I could be in the mood for another dystopia and um, again, reasonable size. We will see how I feel. That's kind of the size of the font in there. Oh, and look at the look at the end pages there. Beautiful birds. So at the moment, we've still got we've got quite a range of um, different countries that these authors are coming from. Um, and I want to add another book that I own before um, I get into books that I have borrowed from the library. So this is another book that I'm recommending to you guys. It's one of my favourites. I have featured it on my channel before, and that is Unicorn by Amru Al-Khadi. Um, so they are uh, British Iraqi, and this is a memoir of their life. So they originally grew up um, in Iraq and ended up moving to Britain. Um, and the book deals with Amory's identity of not quite feeling that he fits and trying to work out who he is and what he wants and how he wants to feel um, about his sexuality, about, about their sexuality, about um, their identity in terms of their culture. Um, and then eventually about their relationship with drag and their relationship with gender. 
and it is really honest and open there are moments that are funny there are moments that absolutely make you want to cry um but it also ends on an uplift so there is a bittersweet feeling and a sense of hope and things in there and i absolutely loved it it explores their relationship with their family it explores their relationship with islam it explores their relationship with iraq and um being in britain during the iraq war and what that was like it is a really incredible memoir and the cover is beautiful as you can see we have foiling on there we've got that around the back and we've got this really nice sort of green inside as well so yes that would be my other recommendation so there you go you have two recommendations from me for the asian readathon and from two different countries um, or actually my final book before I go into the library books um, is a different one. It is a part picture book, um, but it is um, a classic mythology saga. And that is the Puffins Mahabharata, which has been told by Namita Gokhale, who is Indian and illustrated by Sudhasthian, Sud Sudhasawata, Sudhasthian. Sudhasawata Basu. Again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing your names. Not that they're watching, but if you know anyone with those names, I apologise for how I'm pronouncing them. Um, and this is, you know, a, a children's version of the Mahabharata. So it was, I felt it would be more accessible to me in this form. And we have some illustrations in here, which I always enjoy. Um, and I got this because I was really um, looking forward to reading The Burnt Empire and I know that The Burnt Empire is not a retelling, it is inspired by the Mahabharata. I think some people got upset because it's like, but that's not how it happened. It's like, no, it's, it's not a retelling, it's inspired by. Um, so I might just dip into this because I've got, I've started reading it and I've got this far um because i was reading it alongside the burnt empire I haven't finished reading um not the, that's the name of the series i haven't finished reading upon a burning throne by ashok k barker but i am um, banker sorry but i that book is going to need my full attention it is an epic fantasy and i felt i definitely wanted to read the next ones or have them at least available so when that one came out i think the second one was due out the third one has literally just been released I am in the middle of a lot of other epic fantasies. So once I've knocked a few of those out, then I might consider going back to picking up um, Upon a Burning Throne and then reading the Burnt Empire Saga. Maybe try and encourage a few people to do a read along with me. I don't know. But because I really enjoyed the source material and understanding kind of where that comes from, because just personally for me, it deepens my enjoyment because I like to see how tales and stories grow. I wanted um, to be able to understand the Mahar. Mahabharata because I don't know it um so this I thought was the best way for me to do that and I was sort of reading it alongside so I'd read ahead I'd read ahead in this and know the source material and then read the book now I think I have definitely outstripped from just this little itty bit here I think I have outstripped what is going to be covered in Upon a Burning Throne um, so I am keen to read more of Mahabharata and kind of see what happens to this family and everything that is, is going on with them. We have a really nice and highly helpful family tree at the beginning. It's very involved, um, but I do keep referring back to that. Um, so I might dip into this and read. Oh, look, these drawings are amazing. No. So I might dip back into this and read a little bit more. It's not going to count as a full prompt because I'm not intending to read the whole thing because I need to take my time and kind of make sure I know who is who and how they're connected because that's how my brain works. And um, so I might read a little bit of this just because it's fun. Okay, waffled on enough about that already. So my last three books are the ones that I got at the library. So I have a YA contemporary. Um, this is my truth. Um, and trigger running straight away for you this does the whole book is about living in a family where there is domestic abuse going on and um and i don't know any more than that i just literally know that much um i think it's about friendship i think it's about um being in the family and how it's affecting you 
Um, I haven't read, um, oh, and it's by Yasmin Rahman. I haven't read Yasmin Rahman's other book, but she deals with, um, she has another book, and it says it here. All the Things We Never Said. That was her first book, All the Things We Never Said, and that deals with teen suicide. So she very much wants to write about those kind of like heavy mental health topics. So they're very emotionally impactful. Um, and I do love YA contemporary. I love topics of mental health. I love topics of um, different cultures. I love topics of um, LGBTQ+. Um, and just how all of those teens kind of like grow up with their identities and learn who they are and make relationships and decide what they want to do with themselves. I really enjoy all of that. Um, so I'm really, really keen. I don't think I've read, apart from, um, it's going to come to me, Leanne Mariotti's Big Little Lies. Um, and, um, oh, the one, the one that would work for this readathon. Is it A Thousand Splendid Sons? It could be A Thousand Splendid Sons. I'd have to check that. Um, but apart from those two, I've not really read um, a book that really, a big focus of it is on domestic abuse. So um, I'm keen to see how this one goes. I might pick it up. I might end up having to give it back to the library without it being read, depending on how my other readathons go. Um, but it doesn't matter because by taking it out of the library, um, I am supporting this author and this book and this has now come onto my radar. It only came onto my radar because I just saw the spine. I was drawn in by the purple heart and the yellow um, and uh, it's now come onto my radar. So even if I take it back, I will then pick it up at another point. And um, Yasmin Rahman, um, she is British, born and bred here, but I but she did refer to herself as um, South Asian. She was talking about um, how she was kind of comparing her first two books and they were like her children. And so she said, like all South Asian mothers, you do compare your children. Um, so in terms of me reading, making sure I read different authors from different countries, this will work. Um, the only book it could clash, because I haven't got any other South Asian authors on my list at the moment, apart from um, Mahabharata, but I wouldn't be counting it anyway, and I don't think she is from India. So, other two books. This one, it might not count because um, Sean Tan is um, an Australian author um, who has a mixed heritage of um, Irish, British, and Malaysian. And the book that's possibly at the top of my list to read is The True Queen, and Zen Cho is Malaysian. So it might not count if unless I really can't work the true queen into any other prompts. Um, but I saw this and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pick it up anyway, because then I can talk to you guys about it. And I um, am supporting the author by getting it out of the library. And I might just read some bits because look at the illustrations and art in here. So Sean Tan um, is an illustrator. Um, so this book is him using it to kind of demonstrate his um artwork as well as kind of ex it explores um animals and nature and kind of how we are with nature I'm failing to show you any more beautiful artwork in here here we go and how kind of as a society we need to kind of be more aware of our impact on the environment so i think some bits are poems and um, some bit is like featured around the art so we've got two pages here of like little verses and then more like double spreads of artwork that goes on for a few pages. So it's kind of how the whole thing sort of comes together. And then we have pages where there is like a little short story in there. And um, so I'm definitely going to be probably dipping in and out of it. Whether it will fully count for a prompt, I don't know. But like I said, the readathon is here to kind of show you new things, introduce different authors, introduce different books to you, which is marvellous. Uh, my final book that I'm going to share with you is a contemporary middle grade. I've not had a middle grade yet. I'm not counting the Mahabharata. It says children's book, but whoosh, I'll definitely go over the head of most children that I know. Or maybe I'm just rubbish at reading. Um, this is Front Desk by Kelly Yang. Um, so Kelly is um, Chinese and immigrated to California with her family when she was a young girl. And a lot of those feelings and things that she found um, are reflected in her main character Mia in the story 
Um, so the family live in a motel. Um, and that's all I know. <laughs> um, the only other thing I know is that um, the master and champion of middle grade, Mr. Gavin Henderson over on the channel How to Train Your Gavin, uh, highly recommends this book. And like me, he's predominantly a fantasy reader, but um, when he reads a good contemporary, you know that that contemporary is really good for it to kind of fit in like his top 50 or so. And this one does. So I've been really keen to read it since I since I heard him raving about it. And um, I've checked in my libraries before and it's not been around and I'm trying not to buy books at the moment because I have a lot under my bed to earn already. Um, and I just so happened as I was perusing today, there it was, like amazing, that's perfect. Um, so yeah, because it's a middle grade, um, it should be quite an easy read. So we'll see how it how it goes. So that is all the books that um, I am going to be choosing from. So that's my big pile of possibilities, apart from um, Unicorn and Sorcerer to the Crown, because I've already read them. But all the other ones I could end up reading. Um, it's probably just going to come down to two and we will, I will work out which two they are and I may end up only having time to read one. But it's, it's the fun and the joy of it all that counts. So the prompts are, read a book written by an Asian author. So all of these will count for that prompt. Brilliant start. <laughs> then read a book featuring an Asian character who is either a woman so definitely half of these books will count. Yeah, well, I think all of all of them, I think all of the books that I have mentioned would count um, apart from Unicorn and um, Tales from the Inner City. Um, and again, I'm just going to highlight the two that I think I'm possibly going to be gravitating. Sorry, I'm talking to the floor. Let me grab my book and then I'll carry on talking to you just in a big pile. So I think um, the two that I'm probably gravitating towards for this one, because the other parts are either a woman or a character who is older. And older is up to your interpretation. Or a character who is both a woman and older. Um, and so for this, I'm probably gravitating more towards these two. So the Tree Green, like I've already said, has a fantastic character of Prunella, who is a legend. She is a woman, she is amazing, and she is probably, if you have read the Winter Night trilogy, she is probably up there with Vassia for me on this. That's how much I love Prunella. Um, and this one, so one of the characters here, um, Tokyo, has um is is the, one of the protagonists. I've just said that. I can't edit this, we've got drivel in here. Uh, so these are the two protagonists here. Um, and this one, as you can see, is an older woman called Tokyo. So that would fit beautifully for that prompt. Okay, prompt number three is um, an Asian, read a book written by an Asian author that has a universe that you either want to experience or is totally different to yours. So. Let's pull up all the ones I want to experience. Do 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 do. Ba -ba -ba -da. Um. Okay, so all the ones I want to experience, I think, are. <laughs> so again, um, sweet bean paste and the true queen, but also um, the girl who fell beneath the sea. So I think all of those will have fun universes I want to try. So both these are obviously fantastical. Um, Regency London, so much fun with Fairyland and other countries involved. Um, and this one, we've got some sort of underwater world. We've got a mythical kind of place. It sounds amazing. And um, this one is Japan. I have never been to Japan. I would love to go to Japan. Yes, I am just basically being sold on the cherry blossoms. So, and then a world that is totally different to yours. I mean, I think the rest can probably count for this. I mean, obviously, Mahabharata land, not like my world at all. Um, this dystopia, 
hopefully definitely not like my world and I would love for everyone to never experience the world that is going on here and in the of domestic abuse um no idea what this is like at all so I'm not going to count this one because I, I haven't got a clue um I imagine because it's got magic it's not going to be like my world um and I don't live in a motel I've never lived in a motel or America so totally different to mine um, and then read a book by an Asian author that has a cover worthy of googly eyes. Now, although I enjoy a lot of these covers, um, you know, I do think this cover is lovely. Not a googly eye one though. This is perfectly fine, exciting cover. Shows the book, middle grade, warm and inviting. We want to know who she is drawn into it straight away wonderful cover no google eye version though so i think the two googly eyes i mean this is the most beautiful of covers this is absolutely swoon worthy and um you know knocks prompt number four right out of the park and i will show you the end pages as well because the artwork is so gorgeous and then we have this foiling here on the front and then we have another equally beautiful end page here as well so massively works for the prompt um but also we have really beautiful foiling and kind of imagery and sprayed edges going on with this cover as well i also like the spine action we've got going here i love the blues mixed with the golds and kind of the waves going on here the back's okay um so those would definitely definitely count um and i won't be reading it but i love i love this cover it's really very simple but I'm so drawn in like I just want to know who's is this I who are you tell me more it's so flamboyant it's so amazing and absolutely suits Amaru or as he as their alias is Glamaru so also if you are looking for you know a book to work this one definitely and then number five read a book by an asian author that has a high rating or was highly recommended no idea what the ratings are of these books at all none um but um i would say that the was it oh, where's my third there it is these three have definitely been recommended to me because I got them all in a book box. So we've got a shelter book, shelter book club box for this one. And then both of these came in different fairy loops. So that I would say is a recommendation. Um, and obviously, if you're looking for a recommendation, take mine. I recommend Unicorn and Sorcerer to the Crown, provided you enjoy, you know, a Regency fantasy with Jane Austen language or a memoir. So that is my thought process. I have lots of options um, and uh, you will find out which ones I go for in the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like this video. Tell me if you're going to take part in um, the Asian Readathon um, and I will see you in my next video. Happy reading everyone!